For those who watch my videos, you may remember one I did a while ago about my take on Destiny and MLP, specifically focusing on the ramifications of a more hard determinist Destiny system in regards to the plot. Recently I saw Brony Curious and DigiBrony's BronyCon panel stream, which got me back into the topic yet again. Here I will look into Destiny in a more meta sense. Now, I won't go back to previously stated consequences, as those have been dealt with in depth in other videos, including my previous one, by other bronies. You may check out my old video, as well as other videos on the topic, here. Instead, I will wonder if the overall narrative of MLP stands to gain or lose anything if this system is there, and hopefully cover some ground that has not yet been covered before in previous videos, and in a meta sense at that. Without any further ado, here goes nothing. Now. A question probably no one was asking, but will pretend you asked anyway, was why I have stated that I don't have the highest opinion of a more hard determinist destiny system, yet I love Norse mythology, which has some form of determinism as a major part of the mythology. Or how about a favorite pastime from my childhood, Bionicle, which went so far as to have destiny be one of the in-story three virtues. Similar to Norse mythology, this also played a role in the story beyond just being a background concept. In fact, a lot of things I like happen to have determinism in them, such as the TV show Supernatural as well. So if it works for those, and I like those, then it should work for MLP, right? Well, if you ask me, no, it doesn't, and I don't think MLP would gain anything positive from it either. But let's go further into depth about why I feel this way. The reason why is because in the three examples I listed above, the system, as I will now refer to it as, plays no favorites. In Norse mythology, destiny is something the gods were all too aware of, including of the famous apocalypse, Ragnarok. But there was something that was, dare I say, poetic about the use of destiny here. Norse mythology, as I have said before, is more about order versus chaos. Yet when these two forces clash at Ragnarok, both sides kill each other, proving in the end neither side is stronger than the other. Even when the cataclysmic event is over, beings from both sides of the spectrum survive, at least what little survivors were left. There are some interpretations of the mythology that have Odin doing everything he did so that he could essentially give Destiny the finger, even though he dies in the process. Though from what I got, this gambit was that some beings would have been able to survive Ragnarok in the first place, as well as Surt's fire. If this was true, then he succeeded. In Bionicle, despite Destiny being a virtue, along with duty and unity, it was more or less something you had to work for and not every being was bound to it. In fact, it was possible to break free of it merely by completing your destiny, assuming it was something you could survive. There was also that the system here only seems to care that the outcome is achieved. It does not care about the method you use to achieve it. But this becomes interesting later, when it was revealed that the main heroes completing their destiny also completed the destiny of the main villain. Long story short, destiny actually stacked the cards against our heroes from the start, because the ultimate goal of the villain was his destiny to begin with. Oh, and said goal was to overthrow and become essentially God. Then there was Supernatural, where in Season 5, events were set into motion that triggered the Christian apocalypse. The entire point of this season, and also where I get those Team Free Will images you see in previous videos, is essentially this. It's a screw destiny. Right in the face. I say we take the fight to them and do it our way. Good. Anyway, not only is the apocalypse happening, but Sam and Dean are part of it. Sam being the chosen vessel for Lucifer, and Dean being the chosen vessel for Michael. Long story short, Team Free Will manages to stop the apocalypse. Essentially, Destiny, as it was portrayed here, was pretty balanced. As mentioned earlier, it played no favorites. Another reason was that we saw these heroes as heroes in these aforementioned stories because they were fighting against Destiny. As a viewer, you can take away the idea that the narrative here is telling you to fight against the long odds in your life whenever it takes a turn for the worst, or at least that's one way you can interpret stories like these. Anyway, part of the problem is that Destiny in MLP is pretty one-sided, which would tell you that if Destiny does exist here, it's probably guided by a higher power, seeing as my willing suspension of disbelief probably would not accept the idea of it's being guided by an unguided force. It's simply way too selective for me to believe that in the event that there really is a destiny system there. 
The problem part of this comes in when, higher power or not, it raises a lot of unnecessary questions. For example, what is the aim of this being or system? Why does it favor the side it favors? And what is the meaning of its actions? As in, are we supposed to learn anything from them, or what are they supposed to show? To name a few. The past three examples can answer the above questions, or don't need to. Aim of the system? The apocalypse are becoming God. It does not need to answer the second question because it does not favor any side. As for what you're supposed to take from it, well, remember this is from the system's perspective. In Supernatural, it had the Christian apocalypse, so the end of all wicked people, if I remember my Christian theology right. Norse mythology's Ragnarok was a clash of order versus chaos, and Bionicle was to show, if I remember right, that being in a position of power and being apathetic can have horrifying consequences. Granted, one could look at acquiring one's cutie mark as a way to answer those questions, but to me, the references to cutie marks and destiny are merely referring to one's calling in life, rather than a metaphysical force of determinism. Personally, I don't think the existence of cutie marks makes it necessary given my interpretation, but that is just me. Beyond all this, there is yet another problem and it involves Twilight, specifically that the entire point of her character, or at least what could be thought of as the entire point of her character, is contradicted when you use a destiny system. Think about it. Twilight was Celestia's best student and then later became an alicorn. Both things we are supposed to think she earned. I would even go so far as to say the main idea of her character can be summed up as work hard and good things will happen. This is true in the series. Destiny aside, she is said to have earned her spot under Celestia. Her time in Ponyville as part of her advanced studies and becoming an alicorn princess is a result of her position, both of which she earns through hard academic work. The problem with putting destiny into most morals about hard work is that they contradict each other, both in story for obvious reasons already covered in other videos, and on a meta level, which we will examine here. She is in a position where I can honestly believe she has earned what she has. Yet with the system in place, she never really had to work for any of it. It was more or less just given to her. The consequence of this is that, when hard work is eliminated as the secret of success, all you are left with is a now defensible claim that Twilight may be a Mary Sue, since her success is now from some probably intelligent force on high, saying she succeeds just because. Another problem is that it kills dramatic tension, but mostly when you combine it with the aforementioned favoritism and overall optimism. This combination of all three makes everything have a predictable conclusion, in which the meaning is moot because it was all preordained. Some may think to point out that it can be predictable for an optimistic series to have the heroes just keep winning, destiny or not. Sure, some may see it that way, but it is all about execution. For example, the conflict still has meaning if they worked for their victories. Implementing a system means they didn't really work for it. Anyway, I believe that sums up what I have to say for now. Thank you to everyone who decided to watch. Until next time, this is the Oneromancer. Have a nice day. You can choose.